Continuous delivery is the best way that we know to create better software faster. So what's the impact of that on a development team? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe and if you think it appropriate, uh, like the video. Uh, I'm going to talk about five benefits of working on a continuous delivery team today. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to explore the impact of continuous delivery on development teams and what's it like to work on such teams. I'm going to start my description uh, of each of the advantages as I perceive them with a quote from somebody who works on a, on a continuous delivery team. The first advantage on my list is quality software that you can be proud of. Our CI CD environment is able to provide fast, accurate feedback because our developers are empowered to write tests that stand up to a rigorous cost-benefit analysis. Continuous delivery is a better way of producing high quality software efficiently. These things used to be hard to measure, uh, but now we've got real data that can kind of back up these sorts of claims. The DevOps Research and Assessments Group uh, published a book called Accelerate and, uh, and a series of analyses of software project performance in the State of DevOps report produced annually from 2014. Those reports were based on a more scientifically valid approach to assessing and collating the data from such software projects and came out with some fantastic results. The basis of their analysis was based on measuring two key ideas which I've talked about in previous vi videos which you, can, which you can see in the link below. Um, stability and throughput. Stability works as a measure of the quality of our output and throughput on our, the efficiency with which we're able to generate that output. The data from Dora says that continuous delivery is correlated with better software produced more quickly and that there's no trade-off between the speed with which we can produce software and the quality with which we produce it. In fact, the reverse. Moving quickly allows us to produce higher quality software. The data that comes out of this is fascinating. Uh, defect rates drop by orders of magnitude. Uh, we spend less time on, on rework and unplanned work when we're building software this way. There's a 50% reduction in change failure rates uh, at the point at which we deploy into production. Many organizations seeing a, a, a more significant reduction in change failure rates when they move to these kinds of models. 50% less time spent on fixing things like security defects. Let me give you a little bit of an illustration with the story of a team from HP LaserJet. The HP LaserJet firmware team uh, were, in a, were in a mess. They were a team of about 450 people spread around the, uh, around the world in different development centers and they had a five year long backlog of requirements and the business had given up asking for anything new because they knew they were never going to get it. They had a quality problem. Interestingly, they did an analysis of the before and after picture of when they introduced continuous delivery to their organization. Before, they spent 5% of their global development effort on producing software. Five times as much effort went into uh, uh, porting uh, changes between different branches and into product support. So that kind of says something to, to the quality of the software that they were producing. After switching to continuous delivery, which took a couple of years to, 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 get, to, to get them working effectively, they saw an eightfold increase in productivity. They were now spending 40% of their development effort on new features as opposed to 5% previously. If you look at the breakdown of the kinds of activities that they were undertaking, they're very, very different kinds of activities. They're investing a lot of time on automated testing and so on. But the bottom line is the bottom line. The teams were more productive and more effective. Overall, development costs were reduced, program line development were increased, development costs per program were down. So all of this kind of knocked on to having a fantastic effect for, for the teams working in these environments. I'd like you to 
think for a moment what, what these sorts of changes would mean uh, if you worked on a team like this. Instead of spending most of your time doing rework and fixing bugs, you're spending it doing new things. You're being creative. You're building quality software that you can be proud of. Number two in my list of features. Zero time spent merging feature branches means that developers spend more time actually working on features. Deployment rates are up to 8,000 times faster uh, with teams that practice continuous delivery. On average, Amazon releases a change into production once only every 11.2 seconds. On average, such a change is deployed to 10,000 servers once every 11.2 seconds. Since they've been doing that and releasing change more, more efficiently and effectively, they've seen a 75% reduction in outages caused by changes being deployed into production, a 90% reduction in the time taken to deal with such outages. Less than a thousandth of a percent of deployments results in any problem at all, and when it does, they have automated instantaneous rollback and an overall massive reduction in complexity. Number three on my list. There's more fun and less stress in these teams. MindMap is a product of a two-person team, serving millions of users across the world. The two of us do everything from user research through development, testing and operations tasks to customer support. Based on the DORA research, high-performing teams make decisions without the necessity to refer to people outside of the team. This gives the teams more autonomy, more control, and they're able to move faster and more efficiently. Teams that apply continuous delivery are less stressed and claim a better work-life balance uh, and have more fun uh, than teams that don't. The number one predictor of high performance based on the DORA model of throughput and stability is job satisfaction. So teams that practice this approach to development enjoy it much more. The fourth item on my list is a culture of learning. What we have seen over the years is a growing appetite for continuous delivery, which is set to continue in future. Teams making breakthroughs in testing, deployment and so on never look back, but rather want to achieve more. The reason why all of this works is because Continuous delivery is about optimising for learning. I like to think of us applying the principles of science, scientific style reasoning to software development. Um, and what we're doing when we're optimising for learning is that we're trying to establish fast, efficient, high quality feedback loops to support that learning. Continuous delivery creates these effective feedback loops everywhere. We get great technical feedback on the quality of our work multiple times per day uh, when we're working on teams like this. And we get great feedback from our users and can react to that almost immediately. We don't wait for the release of, uh, of software into production before we find out that there are bugs in it. We test our, our software very thoroughly and we can often eliminate large swathes of bugs before the software gets close to production. This means that our customers have a higher quality experience and we get a clear, clearer signal over how they respond to our changes. We don't assume that our ideas are perfect. We collect data from our customers and learn from it. We collect data from our deployment pipelines and learn from it. A key idea that we pick up from science and apply to software development in continuous delivery practice is that it's okay to fail and we try and optimise to fail quickly so that the damage caused by failures is small. We're going to make small, simple, lower risk changes more frequently and if one of those fails, it's not quite so much of a big deal. We're applying the idea that it's good to fail fast everywhere. 
The last on my list of five is that continuous delivery is better for business. Okay. The dependencies between the teams are minimised at the organisational, requirement, architectural, test and deployment level. This unleashes the speed of each individual team and the organisation overall. We're going to talk more about the impact of continuous delivery on the organisations in which we work in the next episode. But for now, I will say that if we are working as part of development teams, of course it is in our, in our interest that the organisations that we work in are successful. We want our ideas to be good ideas. We want them to land with our customers. We want to be proud of the, the, the features that we create and the impact that we have in the industry. I've had the most fun and made the strongest friendships with the colleagues working on continuous delivery teams. The social impact of this more collaborative approach to software de development is profound. I've also produced the best quality software of my career working on such teams. If you haven't already done so, uh, subscribe now uh, and then you, that you won't miss next week's video which is about uh, how continuous delivery is also better for the businesses that practice it. Thank you very much for watching.